Let's get on to game four of the NBA Finals. The Warriors <laughs> won 107 to 97. <laughs> a lot of people last episode said it's not the same when when Riv is not here talking about the Warriors. So you're going to have the floor first. You're going to have the panel first and give your thoughts. What did you see? Jo- Joel and Drew asked me a question last pod if I was worried if the Warriors were, are going to lose this series. Do you have any worry, concern as of right now? I have no worry. <laughs> it's, there has never been a worry in my mind. Um, I always thought going down 2-1, I was just like, we got to split in Boston. You know, I thought losing game one was huge because we could have been potentially up 2-0 going back to TD. But I always thought if we can get one in TD, the series is back in our favor. And it took, you know, a Steph Curry master class, Clay in the fourth. It took... Andrew Wiggins being the best rebounder on the floor for us to get that W. But that's what the Warriors have been doing all year, you know, fighting adversity, guys stepping up big. But um, I'm not worried. 2-2, going back to Chase, you know, I feel comfortable. They haven't been able to stop Steph yet. You know, and it's it's the thing that they're doing, and I finally figured it out. It took me some couple of times, but they've completely taken Draymond at the series. They took in the motion offense out the series. They got the Warriors playing in a way they don't like to play, which is – the uh, offense that they can guard well, ISO offense. You know they're trying to make us a pick up, just a straight. We're gonna give Steph and Clay the greatest shooters on planet Earth. We're gonna give them these shots, and it's either hit them or miss. And Steph has been lights out. Clay, he's got to go in a game three. Last game he was a little bit off, but defensively he was crazy. In the fourth, he fought, somebody finally stopped Jalen Brown. Thank God, Jesus Christ, somebody finally stopped him. But I think game five, going into game five, you know, we, we need a lot from Kevon Looney, Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole, Clay. We just need everybody to step up. Defensively, we still need to be amazing. I love how Kevon Looney was the first name you listed right there. Man, Kevon Looney's fucking he, dope, man. He's pretty cool, but <laughs> come on. I think Clay, Jordan Poole, Wiggins. This, is a, this is a nice little character development from you because you weren't high on Kevon Looney. I hated, I hated, I hated I him, but he, hated he, him. he used to be a waste he's of been, space. He's been huge he's this been, playoffs. He's finally he's better. He, he's been incredible, and I, I'm now a, a Looney fan. You're a stand? Guy. Yeah, I'm Yo, a, that's I'm a, lit. I'm a Kevon I respect Looney that. Stand. I'm a Wiggins stand. I know that. But um, they haven't been able to stop Steph. They won't stop Steph. The only thing that's going to stop Steph is Steph. Jason Tatum has been shit. Uh, shout out to Andrew Wiggins. He's guarded him well. Jalen Brown has been putting on the show. But I think game five, we're going to steal it, and we're going to get that W. All I'm, right. I'm very comfortable, and I okay. am not at all. You know, yeah, yeah, I tried to dog on Joel last episode because I, I wasn't dog here. Him. I didn't dog but, him. You know, now now I'm back. So now, you know what I'm saying? The Warriors guys, we're back because he's a Warriors guy right now. I'm going to pay my boy some homage. You didn't flip uh-huh. yet, right? No. No. All, okay. he, have all he said was that okay. uh, slightly worried. That's all he said. Word. I'm no, I, I said worried that it's going to go to seven. Oh, but you we're still here. Uh, yeah, it's still I, I said worried that it's yeah. going to go to seven no, games. Uh, I don't yeah. know if that's what you said. You might have said yeah. that also, <laughs> but I I feel like you there's a little concern uh, but you were Are still, you concerned? Uh, no, I'm I'm more no. than 6 for me. I said I said Celtics in 7. Oh, right? Oh, and and oh. regardless of that fact, I I feel pretty pretty okay with how the series has gone. The fact you were able to split and chase of your Boston, that's huge. You take game 1, which is a uh, complete Ripping of the heart, especially when they were Ripping down 15. The heart? They were down 15 and won by double digits. You split and chase. You weren't expecting to go 2-0. You take one, that's fine. You win the first game at home, so there's no pressure on you game four. You lose game four in, in disappointing fashion because Steph Curry was absolutely all world. This was Steph Curry's greatest game in in the finals to this date. I saw you, you tweet something about how people are trying to say that that was his first signature uh, moment in the NBA Finals. Yeah, very bad take. And that's not that's not true because in 2015 there was the series was tied two two. Steph Curry put up what 37 points to to put 14 them up. in the fourth. Yeah, he was insane. But that it's not his first moment. That that's pretty disrespectful. But in my opinion, this was Steph Curry at his absolute best. 43 points, 10 rebounds, 14 and 26 from the field, seven for 14 from three. He was unbelievable. Now some crazy stats. Joins Jerry West and Magic Johnson as the only point guards to record 40 and 10 in a finals game. At the age of 34 years old, 88 days, he is the second oldest player in NBA history to record a 40 and 10 game behind LeBron, who was 35. Uh, uh, he was absolutely sensational, and, and a lot of credit to to Clay Thompson down the stretch where he has been struggling to hit his shot defensively. He stepped up tremendously. JB was cooking basically the entire game down the stretch of the fourth quarter. Clay picked up. We saw JB struggle for the, I wouldn't say the first time because game two, Draymond had him, had him in hell. But since then, JB has just been consistently dominant until that fourth quarter of game four. And another thing that I saw that I did not like 
was Jason Tatum's lack of aggression in that fourth. Basically, the entire second half, he needed to assert himself more, significantly more in that game four, and maybe the outcome's a little bit different. I saw them try and, and make the big shot instead of trying and taking the smart shot, forcing a way to the line. They were trying to tie the game with threes, and it seemed as if every single possession they were coming up short. It looked like six threes in a row that they missed. They were just trying to tie the game, trying to have a three-point battle with the best three-point shooting team in the NBA. It's not going to win you ball games. They need to be smarter. They were turning the ball over way too much. Anytime they turn the ball over more than 15 times, they have lost. It's not a surprise, especially when you're playing a team like the Warriors that can just have any lead taken from you. Next game, the reason why I'm not worried is because they have shown where they have they have their moments of struggling, they bounce back. Next game is simple. You have to be smarter with the ball in your possession, and you need to be more aggressive. Tatum needs to be more aggressive. It gets to the point when you need the ball in your best player's hands, and Tatum needs to to assert himself as such. You mean Jalen Brown? Listen, I, I don't. I, I understand so exactly what you're saying. Jalen Brown has been the best player for sure, but Jason Tatum needs to be the best player if they want to win an NBA Finals. Yeah. Is he like the only elite wing without a consistent mid range jump shot? Would you say it's not? I feel like a lot of his misses come from attacking the basket and missing. Maybe his I heard he's dealing with a shoulder injury. No, he no he is, is he, dealing with a shoulder he injury. Is. That's from what I and his three, his three point shooting his three point shooting has been which is very stellar. weird. It's been like he's like forty four percent from the three point like thirty four from, from the field. It's weird. I don't know because he's attacking the be- the the basket. And he's just mm-hmm. missing really. Yeah, I mean, but really, I'm not. If if, if I'm you know, a Celtics you look, fan, you look at the I should not Kevin, be worried. Kevin Durant. I don't see him doing that. LeBron, oh, Kawhi, you know. I don't see him in the finals Tatum, either, Tatum yeah. also isn't that. Like, he's not that. <laughs> not what? He's not LeBron. He's not KD. He's not, he's not Steph. He's, he's, not, he's not Kawhi right oh, now, for oh. sure. Okay. I just wanted we're to talk, hear that. We're, talk, we're talking, <laughs> peak, we're talking yeah. peak Kawhi not in free. Toronto. I just, not want, I just wanted to hear that. He's right? not that. Yeah, I'm glad you admitted that. It's his first finals, and he's averaging, what, 20? This, this is also Jalen Brown's first finals. And Jalen Brown is a beast. Dog. For sure, they're both very good at basketball. I don't, I just, I don't think Jalen Brown's facing the same defensive pressure that Jason Tatum gets from the Warriors. No in way. my opinion, Draymond versus Wiggins, I think it's around the same. No, because you said Andrew Wiggins is, is uh, Jason Tatum's primary defender, and but Draymond from what I see Jaylen from the Brown's Warriors, primary. they like to run a lot of traps on Jason Tatum. I mean, the f- game one he had thirteen assists, he had to give up the ball. It's he only true. Had game points. one, they decided we're gonna. I'm let just him. saying, right the Warriors 100%. are more. They're more geared to try to stop Jason Tatum, and he's their best player. I feel like Jalen Brown's getting the luxury of one-on-one matchups Against more so Draymond than Jason Tatum. Green, though, like I, I would understand you if it was one-on-one. And it looks like, like he's Clay been Thompson. killing Draymond, but Draymond's actually defending him really well. So that was kind of a weird thing that I saw today. But um, my I mean, takeaway, my fault. My, my takeaway from the game was uh, obviously Steph Curry had a, a master class performance. He had forty-three points. I wanted Boston. I was rooting for Boston hard, but you know Steph Curry was hitting all these deep threes, and he was just. It seemed like every time Boston was going to make a run to cut the lead or go back into the game, Steph Curry hit him with a three. Those last two threes, when he put when they were up by three, then hit another one to put him up by six. That's when they closed the deal. But um, I mean, in the fourth quarter, I agree. Clay Thompson, I saw, I was watching it personally, but I knew that there was going to be a highlight film highlighted around his defense on Jalen Brown, and he looked like prime Clay on the defensive side of the ball. He got three big stops on Jalen Brown, two on top of the key, stopped penetration, stopped him, and then the last one when he uh, forced the turnover on, on the sidelines on Jalen Brown. So uh, I, I kind of agree with Drew. I feel like Jason Tatum has to take over. I know he's dealing with a shoulder injury, but Jason Tatum, for this team to win a championship, you have to be that guy. And I know the defensive uh, coverage and pressure that he's getting from the <coughs> Warriors is, you know, it's they're playing great defense on him. But like we all say, every superstar has great defense uh, presented to them, and it's never going to be easy. You just have to find a way to get your shot up. You have to find your way to be impactful. Game one, Jason Tatum had 12 points, but he had 13 big assists. I feel like out, outside of game one, Jason Tatum hasn't really been passing the ball as much as he was as he was before. And obviously, I agree with River as well. The mid-range jump, jumper is not really there. Jalen Brown's been having to carry. But um, I feel like the same problems uh, elude the Warriors as well. Steph Curry, I mean... He's been amazing. He's been the best player all four of the games in these in these NBA finals. He's been the leading scorer. He's the leading scorer in the finals right now. But I feel like the same thing, the same problems uh, present with the Warriors. Klay Thompson has to be better. He was 7 for 17, 41%, 4 for 10 from the three. Not ideal numbers. Jordan Poole gave you 14 inefficiently. Uh, we need more... We need more scoring output from these other guys for the Warriors as well. So I think game the next game is what game game five game five, five game five is going to go back to go to, go to chase. 
I don't think the Warriors drop that game. I think they go up 3-2. And I think there's a possibility, to be honest with you, that the Celtics season is over at TD Garden, in my opinion. But, you know, like I said, this next game is going to really decide whether it goes six or seven. Because I do think if the Celtics do win, this series is definitely going to seven. But I think if the Warriors win, I think that they've been there enough times to close this series out in, in TD Garden. Celtics, whenever they've lost, they've bounced back. But the same thing goes for Golden State. I think they defended a lot of the Celtics' actions well, uh, specifically flare screens. They were very good at communicating that and, and stopping wide open threes, which they were giving a bunch of in, in game three and game one, a bunch of wide open threes. Something about the Boston Celtics is that the last 12 seconds of the shot clock, the Celtics shoot 54% in wins and they shoot 35.7% in losses, which means that in games where they're struggling offensively, it's because their shot profile is inconsistent. And that's what I've been saying about the Celtics is that they're an inconsistent offense because the shot diet is not always – they're not always taking the best shots. And that was the case last game. And they're also not a very good clutch team. They were they finished as the second-worst clutch team in the NBA last season. This past season, they had a five-point lead with seven and a half minutes left to go. They scored twice on the final 12 possessions and scoreless on all possessions that were counted as clutch possessions. So the Celtics were not able to generate any offense. We saw Klay Thompson step up defensively. I thought, he, I mean, he hit a big time shot late, the big time three that put him up also. And I really think this is a credit to Steve Kerr and his adjustments and taking Draymond Green out the game because he's not being aggressive. He's not passing the ball because nobody's guarding him. Celtics defenders are closing out on him with the intention that he's already looking to make that extra pass. So they're already helping off of him as soon as he gets the ball. Taking him out and then putting in Kayvon Looney and having that lineup with Steph Poole, Clay, and Wiggins, I think opened up the floor a lot, and it also offered some rim protection. Uh, so Tatum and Brown didn't feel like they could just easily get to the rim and finish off of Looney. There was a bit of a risk there when he did put Draymond back in the game, but him and Kayvon Looney worked pretty well. I think Ime is going to make this next adjustment in Game 5. I think they're going to start trapping Steph Curry. They're not going to let him play one-on-one. -on -one. They're not going to let him go ISO. Uh, this entire series, that's what they've been doing so far, and it's tied 2-2. So that tells me that if Ime makes that adjustment and they start trapping Steph and other guys can't capitalize – that can be the adjustment that potentially changes around this series and makes the Celtics the winner in this series. Curry is averaging 1.57 points per jumper right now. KD in the first round was at 0.83. Boston has held players to 0.97 on average. So right now, Steph Curry statistically is He's generating otherworld. offense at an elite level, and this is one of the best defenses that we've seen in quite some time in the Boston Celtics. I don't feel like, I mean, one of the adjustments they can make is just stop playing as much drop coverage 100%. and just going over the screens and, and, you know, blitzing Curry. Yeah. And that can be the adjustment that t hopefully, you know, changes around this series. But it is on other guys to step up. Wiggins, I think, did a great job as, as a rebounder and defending. He was consistent offensively. Clay, we're, we're getting closer to that game six where he's going to, we know he's going to have a 30 point explosion in that game. <laughs> Uh, Draymond Green has to be more aggressive offensively and defensively. I think he's okay right now. He's been playing okay, but it's just he's six five. He has a big wings, wingspan, but I don't feel like anybody on the Celtics, whether that be Marcus Smart, Jason Tatum, or Jalen Brown, are not looking to attack the rim because Draymond is there. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're looking to attack him, especially given Draymond's. Uh, Draymond's tendency to arc other players. They definitely have that added chip that they want to attack him. And I feel like that's why it really comes down to Draymond's offensive consistency and aggression. And it also comes down to how the Warriors are going to handle these traps for Steph mm -hmm. and how all these other guys are going to play off that. I don't think we're going to see the same type of Steph explosions uh, these next couple of games. <coughs> But I say I definitely just to just to just to piggyback off what Joel so said real quick. No, I definitely I don't know what that was. I definitely no, I, I really definitely tried to agree. get something out, but it's just it's like it <laughs> I definitely definitely agree with the trapping scheme on Steph Curry. I definitely agree with blitzing them. I mean, Warriors. I mean, part of me, the Cavaliers in 2016, they don't have nearly the defensive identity that this Boston team does. But 
that show they showed you in that series blitz and steph curry trapping them picking up up high off screens that that played a, a, a major part in their defense and in their way of shutting them down not shutting them down but he really struggled that series a lot of people say it was due to injury but i, I give credit to the Cavs defense um 2019 the same defensive scheme was ran obviously kevin durant he wasn't part of one that too kevin durant wasn't present in that series you know when he was on the floor couldn't really i mean you did blitz steph curry but you 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 had clay thompson kevin durant elite snipers all over the floor so it was a lose-lose situation but um I mean, like I said, I agree with you. You can't ha- allow Steph Curry to just completely erupt on you because the series is 2-2. I get vibes of, like, when the Bucks were guarding Kevin Durant last year, they were literally guarding everybody else and they're literally just letting Kevin Durant go to work. And it took him an overtime to do it in Game 7. I just don't. I just think Steph Curry's too great of a player that you just really can't allow him to play one-on-one. You see his, uh, you see his partners on the wing. Klay Thompson's not playing really well. Jordan Poole, they're all struggling. I think that's the smart defensive uh, uh, switch that you have to do. I think you have to blitz them and force everybody else who's been struggling this series to beat you. You just can't allow Steph I mean, Curry to beat you. He's too only, great. The only time I've seen this type of defense is like when the Spurs had Tim Duncan and he physically just can't do anything else. And then when they played Ennis Cancer in Portland. So it's like, it's it like like I said, it's taking Draymond out the, out the series. It's taking the motion offense out. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you start doing all the, the blitz and the trapping. It's going to leave shooters open. But Clay, he's I've watched every word. He's been like this after Denver. It, Clay's due for one game, maybe two, and then he's like stinky for the rest. Jordan Poole, he's the, the one. Him and Wiggins have been consistent for the most Wiggins part. Wiggins has been good, but like Wiggins has been solid. Yeah. Wiggins, Poole Wiggins has been, honestly been, probably been the second best player in this series. No, he's Steph he's Curry. been the second best player for the Warriors. Undoubtedly, for the Warriors. Yeah, for the Warriors. He's been the, the second the best player undoubtedly for the Warriors. But at the same time, like Wiggins, Poole, it's gonna be up to them. Wiggins, Poole, Looney. You could throw Clay in there, but I'm really like low on Clay because this has really been him for the past three series. Like, yo, we're gonna get one game, game maybe six two. Clay coming up. Yeah, game six Clay is cool, but we gotta <laughs> win. You know, game five, it's, game six Clay can be cool if we win game six, but now game seven, what are you gonna do? Yeah, you sure. play like shit. So now it's like, <laughs> all right, this was a waste of time, you know. So I think the other guys got to step up. But like you said, Kerr's adjustments. These these two coaches are adjustment coaches. They make elite adjustments after a loss. So. It's going to be interesting. It's been a pretty good chess match. It's going to be interesting to see what Eme does for Game Five. The Celtics won't win Game Five. I'm just going to let you know that very early. Very like, there's like, I would bet my life on uh, it. That you the probably Celtics, said the same shit at the game one. I didn't say this. No, I said Game Two. We're not. Like, there's no, no way in hell sure. we're going to no, lose. No, I agree. But I really believe Game Four was crazy. Game Five, we're going in thinking like they're done. Really? We got so them. Steph so Curry yeah. saved the season. So Ste- if they try to take Steph Curry out of the game, which we haven't seen yet, um, you trust in Jordan Poole? And Clay Thompson. Whoa, whoa, whoa! To carry keep, the keep offense. Going, keep going, keep going. Oh, Andrew, my boy. Andrew my Wiggins, boy. really yeah. respect him. Okay, okay. He's locked your boy. For sure, I've given respect him. me saying <laughs> not me boy not up. saying his name was respect actually because he has actually been playing well. Jordan Poole and Clay no, have been inconsistent. Been, well, I mean, Poole's been good the last. Two he's games. been inc- okay. Was Poole really had fourteen good? last game? Okay. But it was like it's okay. I mean, yeah. Jordan, he had a nice little stretch in the. He he gave them a spark. He had a nice little stretch. Don't disrespect, bro. He's been mid. Yeah, has he's he been, been mid made, in general? Yeah, yes. but the last two games he's been okay. Gary Payton yeah. fake gave him a little spark too. He got two steals I like Gary defensively. Payne. Gary I, like, I like Gary Payton, but you don't like Jordan I, Poole. You're a weird guy. Nah, Jordan Poole just has a, a ridiculous amount of hype behind him. Like, if you're gonna have this hype, you better con- like continue to perform. So, so wait a minute. So, so your guys get the this is their first finals. But I didn't Jordan say Poole that. doesn't get that <laughs> Did same I say that? excuse. Did that, I say that? Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm, that's why I didn't say that. No, you didn't say it was Tatum's first finals. Tatum, it's his first finals. His under, like he, he I said that come. maybe before the show. No, I didn't you say that on the show. No, you said it on the show. Yeah, 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 it's all good, though. Yeah, but Jason that? Tatum, yeah. he faces way more defensive okay, pressure this than... I know, we're talking about a fourth option. It's a fact. You can't deny that. You can't deny that. We're talking about a fourth option. Wait, wait, stop. Nah, wait, hold on, Jordan pulls the fourth option? Definitely. He's behind Draymond, Clay, Steph. No, Clay, Steph, Wiggins, Poole. He's not behind Wiggins. Never mind. That's a, not you don't even think he's point. behind Wiggins? I don't even care. Oh, I'm, I'm being all right, so I just that's this whole what I hit you as Tatum has faced this different defensive pressure. No thing. more this more defensive pressure thing. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like I'm gonna be a hundred percent honest with you. 
They're switching everything. He's seen <laughs> Steph Curry in multiple one-on-one situations. Yeah, but, yeah, but, after, after, Pool, but did you notice after, after, he, did you notice after he scored two no, no, buckets no, 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 on no, Curry, they, they he, started sending the double? Did no, you they, notice but that? They don't listen when he gets the they, little when he gets the little ISO on the elbow. They don't send the double because nine, nine seven times out of ten, it's just him versus Wiggins. They've trusted Wiggins on him oh, one on one. So this, great de- this defensive pressure thing that you're talking about that he's seen, he sees he sees pressures on drives. Yes, of course he loves to drive on a little guard. But when he's on when Green. Is on him when Looney's on him when Wiggins is on him. They don't send doubles or they, they let those three sit on the island with Tatum. So this whole defense, even Looney. when Jalen Brown I don't know about Looney. attacks, the I rack, agree with, with even Green when Jalen Brown attacks, they send help. It's whoever the little guards are guarding, they send help. So this whole he's seen the this defensive pre- no bro. So that's wait, not so, the case, so, bro. so he's just so the missing. game. So the game he had thirteen assists. The Warriors weren't guarding him and throwing no, everybody they, at they him. Were no, throwing, they, they were throwing. They definitely were. That's what I'm saying. Was, when he so, was okay, driving so, to so the basket, So who's had more bro? opportunities? At, who had, who's had more one-on-one opportunities this entire series? Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown? Who's had more opportunities for one-on-one? The answer is Jalen uh, Brown. It's Jalen Brown, bro. I'll probably say Jalen Brown by it a is. little bit. It's Jalen nah, Brown. By a little bit. Jalen Brown. J- Jason Tatum only sees doubles or blisses when he's a little guard is guarding, which you're supposed any Of course. Anybody on this table, you're good. But when he's seen... Wiggins, even Looney, well, you, I, even I would, be a no, but, so, nah, guards him also, by himself, but, but let's and that's be, a fact. But let's nah, everybody nah, seen it. Be those Lisa two plays guarding him well. When the, when like, those two plays, but he, he strapped Jalen Brown too. Those but two plays. Saying, he, they don't send doubles when the bigs when, are. They don't send doubles. When Curry none switches of that. onto JT nine they, times out of ten, when he goes to the right. Nah, but but Rave, you're not going to send a double if it's Andrew Wiggins or Draymond Green guarding him. But everybody else, you're sending a double. But that's what I'm saying with Jalen Brown. It's not really. More defense because Draymond Green's guarding Jalen Brown. So he so starts out gonna, the game guarding Jalen Brown. So yeah. you're not going to send defensive pressure for Draymond Green. Same thing for Tatum. Wiggins is on him. You're not going to send a double team for that. You trust your best wing. No, defender. we get that. But when, when the Celtics when call goal. for the screen to get the guard on him, yeah, that's, that's when just, you have to but send it. That's, that's what Brown, does, The difference is Jalen Brown doesn't call for a screen. He really doesn't do it. He brushes he, it off. He, but when he does call for it and he sees Poole or he sees Curry, then they send help. This is n- it's not nothing different. It's just they're two different games. I just so it's like I mean I get I get what you're saying. I just. Feel like Jason Tatum we're also talking about a number one pressure, option bro. as opposed to again like I was saying the number four option just the looks they're seeing oh, no we're not comparing them no that was my initial thing which is what my pool was like the number three because he, he was like bro you're gonna be like this for pool but <laughs> when I mentioned Jason Tatum <laughs> no, this is the first difference finals, bro pay my son some slack I, I I am but at the same time like there's some hype behind you you got to be consistent so I'm asking I mean Tatum for. has to be consistent too, I, and there is a lot of hype emphasize that I think you called him like a top five player if he wins the ring yeah I think you did say some nonsense he wins finals MVP and the champion. He, he won't better win than Kawhi. He's not on pace no, he to win the finals. He won't, win, right he won't win it. I just want to let you I mean, know. That. Three Wait, more if games they win, left. he won't win it? No, he won't win it. So, what if he goes crazy? Games. Wait, so if Jalen Brown wins finals MVP, where does he go? If Tatum nah. went to top five, where are we putting him? Nah, Jalen Brown, nah. he should be top 25 as is. Right. You, he wins I think he's MVP, there right now. Still top, still top twenty five. I see people say he's top fifteen. Really? Jesus, <laughs> that's strong. That's strong. I love Jalen Brown. We know this. Top fifteen is crazy. He's not top fifteen at all. No, no. Top, not even close. The, like the only thing, you can, the only thing you can argue is top twenty. I would. I probably. The same I feel like that's they the line the that you cross it. Like if he's is he better than SJ or he's not. Because if he's not better than SJ, then he's nowhere near the 15. The top 10 is locked. I don't even feel like no, I need no, a name. No, you don't need to do that. that. But, the, but the 11 through 15 are guys like really Paul good. George. Yes. Kyrie. Are guys like Kyrie. Trey Young. Uh, Trey Young. Jimmy Devin Butler, Booker. Those guys. Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler. I would say Jimmy Butler he's closer fringe, to the top 10. Well, he's like 10 to his yeah, yeah. Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard. Went healthy. Yeah, yeah. healthy yeah, so game. Jalen Brown is new. Anthony Davis. Oh, I won't, I'm not going to acknowledge that. Oh, really? Anthony Davis is top 20? Anthony Davis is better than Jalen Brown, bro. That's cool. He hasn't touched the basketball since so, April. All right, so Anthony Davis or Jalen Brown? <laughs> Why am I gonna Anthony nah, Davis Anthony or Jalen Brown? Bro. Right now, I'm taking Jalen Brown. Oh no, no. Over AD, really? I'm taking Jalen Brown over AD. God, God, God. 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 I don't agree with that. <laughs> I don't agree with that. But it's not so a bad wait, we take. all we all agree. It's not a bad yo, take. We, we all not agree. A bad take. Not a bad yo, Rip, we all you agree. You just called him the best Robin in the league. I love him for sure. Wait, wait, wait. did you say Robin. you said he's the best Robin? Yes, he yeah, yeah, is a Robin. Oh, he's a Robin. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you're saying essentially Jalen Brown's better? Nah, than nah, but it's different levels. Nah, of being Robin. it's different levels of being mean? Robin. It's the same Robin. Nah, but AD like the Robin is the same. Like, come on, we're not talking about the bubble. He's a nah, I get what you're saying. You think AD is more? It's, it's, it's I mean, a, he's a, he was be, not now, but he was before of a superstar echelon. Jalen Brown's not there so before is, though. Is Jalen Brown better than Pascal Siakam? Yes, yes. You think role. easily? I think not easily, but I think he's I, better I'll than him. Pascal. What about? Beal? I think they're in the same tier. Beal. I've always said Jalen Brown's better. Than I don't know, like the, two, the yeah. two-way ability of Jalen Brown makes me. I think Jalen Brown, if he wins Finals MVP, he's like 16 to 18 range. 
Maybe that's nah. still pushing. More, more I was so like say, I was gonna say top twenty if he wins the finals. So, wait, so, so we all forget about Brandon Ingram too. We all agree so SGA is better too. than him, right? SGA is better than him. I would lean Jalen Brown. SGA. I think SGA. If he's in, you know what? You can't ask me. I love like SGA. Me too. I, I like him a lot too. It's just, like, just be, let's try to put the bias aside. No, it's true. It's hard to compare because he plays on a shit ass team. Yeah. So it's like they're the same tier. Anthony Edwards. Same tier. Wow. Yeah, they're, they're the same Before team. I ask this question, I want to ask you, JC, mm. um, if you can stand up and turn off the AC, just because yeah, it's, it's loud. Yeah, it it's is. Loud. It, it, it is pretty loud. loud. But um, I'm just gonna go off and say this. Um, so we talked about Game Five of the Finals and whether you know the adjustments that both teams need to make. So what are all your predictions? You know, you're still sticking Warriors, Warriors in six. six. You're going with Celtics in seven. Celtics in seven. JC, I have. I mean, I have Warriors in seven. This guy now. just said like Warriors it. in six in his monologue. No, 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 no. I said, I said, if the I feel like if the Warriors win the next game, I think they win it in six. If the Celtics oh. win the next game, so you're going to four wins this game. Yeah, but um, I'm gonna. I've been saying Celtics, so I'm gonna go Celtics in seven. That's interesting. Celtics I just swept you. You're picking them no, to win. They, they whooped our ass. Yeah, what can I say? Yeah. What can Do I you say? Learned. He learned. Yeah, we didn't learn. Next year, it's going to be different. Do you Word. think? <laughs> I feel Word. like I've been saying that forever. No, you have. 